Okay, holy crap! Jack, <laughs> what's, what's up? Hey, bud. What's life like? Oh, you know, living the dream. Living the dream. Well, essentially, came down to the fact that we had a really cool idea at the start, you know? I The idea was there. And the execution was there for a 14 year old, for a group of 14 year old kids. Then it was time to take it a step further. If we're gonna make a movie, look, we got the characters, we got what we need, let's just do it. So I started writing in December of 2017. And I would write in school. Normally it was in cl science class. I'd just be sitting there typing, just as ideas came to my head, I just went and just, whatever came to my mind, I'd write it down on and on my school computer and just went with whatever came to my mind. A lot of what we do is do it as we go. Um, all the action scenes, not a single one is planned out in the script. They're all show up and let's do a fight scene. In the script, it literally just says they fight for a while and then we figure out how that goes. And so that's kind of the same thing with some of those scenes is where we knew what, we knew where we wanted the story to go and we knew that some characters needed more development, so maybe we'd throw in a scene with them, or maybe we needed a talking scene with some characters, so we'd throw in stuff there. Really wanted to build the story up to the climax, so play with your emotions a little bit, you know? Not intentional at all. It just turned out that way. We, the way the script goes, it's kind of just go by feeling rather than go by information. So it's kind of, we knew where we wanted the scenes to be put in. Um, and so that's just kind of the way it worked out. Um, the pacing, I mean, when, when, when you only have sometimes 10 minutes a day to, to film something, you have to, everything, you're always kind of on that sense of urgency, you know? And so that kind of helped with the pacing of the story is the way we filmed it was the same pace the whole way through. Really, we took kind of the general idea of the original show. And from there we could play with the characters. We knew who the characters were. We knew what their mindsets would be like. And so we kind of just played with that a little bit and put, put the movie into a different circumstance of what these characters would do in a different situation than the show. Um, uh, we decided to do a movie because we'd never done a feature film before. And we decided, let's just go for it, you know? Let's make a movie. We've never done it before. How hard can it be? And uh, we found out how hard it really was. <laughs> but yeah, when, um, the characters all just kind of, it was really whatever fit, I guess, you know? Whatever fit together, however it would play best with each other. And that's kind of how it all came to be, I'd say. It was kind of a loss that Carl wasn't a bigger part of, the, I mean, the name Carl isn't even said in the show or in the movie, but then again, we have to work with what we've got. You know, Ron is busy, busy man. And so he's only, he helped when he could. So we had to make the most of it, but that's kind of how we had to play most of those characters is whenever people were available. Um, some scenes people would be off out of town and we just have to completely change the way the scene worked on that day, you know? This really went with when people were available kind of thing. I was super excited. I was like, I wanna do it, let's do it, let's make it. I was super excited. We were waiting on the new camera to get in because um, we had ordered a new camera online and we said, the minute this camera gets here, we're gonna hit the ground, we're going. We're gonna make this movie. And so once we started, we were off and it was literally just chugging through until the very end, 10 months of just pounding it as hard as we possibly could until the very end. The disadvantage obviously is that we filmed all this from one camera. Um, luckily you, Claude James Anderson, came in clutch with his camera for a specific scene, the rooftop scene where everything was going wrong that day. We had 30 minutes to shoot that scene. The drone broke, um, our camera broke and you were there luckily with your camera in a pinch, but Every other day we just had our camera and so that meant that we didn't have multiple camera angles of a scene so we'd have to do the scene multiple times from different angles. You know, I, I've said so many times, all right, exact same thing, I'm just gonna get it from this side, you know, and, but that's what you have to do when you have one camera. Another disadvantage was we had no audio equipment 
because our camera is not meant for making movies, it's just meant for vlogging. So again, Williams Anderson steps in the clutch of the audio equipment. Um, so you can actually understand what people are saying. Uh, that was a disadvantage. Essentially, this whole movie was made on a zero dollar budget and a single camera, if that makes sense. And that's what we had to work with. Yes, I felt that we had enough experience in what we had done. And so I guess I never really questioned the quality of what we would be doing because I knew whenever we make a video, we don't, it's not like we don't try our hardest. We're always going for the best we can get. And so it was never in question as to the quality we could make it because I knew that whatever we did, it would be the best we could be, if that makes sense. So I, I, I guess I, I would say I always felt that we were prepared because just the experience among us and if we fail, we fail. You know, that was kind of the mindset. Basically in this story, we're trying to send a message and the message is, do not conform. And so when I was writing his character, I really wanted him to be an example of, of something that people could look to and apply to their own lives. I didn't want, I didn't want Frankie to, essentially I didn't want him to have any flaws in the movie. Um, I know everybody's human and stuff, but I really wanted this to be an example that people could look at and say, even through the toughest times, Frankie did not break. He didn't crack. He always did what he knew was right. And that was kind of just kind of something to motivate, I guess, and to not no excuses. Well, oh, look at what Frankie did. I can do this, you know, wanted to have a really strong moral that people could follow you know so robbie is kind of the one that people relate to frankie's the goal but robbie's who people can relate to um you know we all we all make big mistakes we've all made many mistakes and it's kind of showing that with robbie he always tries to do that he knows he needs to do the right thing but he's he falls and it, it kind of shows what happens if you go down that path, right? We always have two paths we can follow. We can do the path that we know what's right, or we can do what we know isn't right. And we, we kind of with Robbie, we see what happens when you take the path that you know isn't right, and it does not work out for him in the end. But then you see that something changes in him, and he, he realizes that that's not the right road he needs to be taking. And that kind of brings him back to where Frankie's been. Cyrus represents society. Cyrus represents the pressures of people telling you, you need to do this, you need to do that. You know, um, people trying to pressure you into doing things that you know aren't right. And that's what Cyrus represents. Uh, all the goons look up to him. All the goons fall in line with him and try to be like him and want to please him. And we see what happens with that, you know, nothing, Frankie says that nothing lasts for nothing evil will last forever. And Cyrus had a reign of 15 years, but in the end, people forgot about him. It was a phase. Um, and it shows that it shows that if you keep in mind that you know what's right, the evil will pass. It's not going to be there forever. And that's kind of what Cyrus is representing is the pressures of life. Yeah, uh, you know, it people make out to be like, they know what's best for you. Society always says, this is, you know, we're your friend. We're gonna, we know what you need. We know what you want. But in reality, it's just selfish for them. Cyrus kills so many of his goons. Just He doesn't care about them. He doesn't actually care about them. Like Frankie's trying to tell Robbie, they don't actually care about you. And Robbie realizes that and he, turns around, you know, the powerful scene, powerful scene when Robbie's talking to Cyrus and Cyrus tells him he cares about him, you know, he knows what's best for him, he can trust him. But we see in the end, Robbie's just another goon to Cyrus. Just like, we are all just pawns to society, I guess, if, if you take the wrong road. The tone, the way we wanted it to feel was heavily inspired from 
Batman Arkham Origins the video game. As odd as that sounds, um, we really wanted to have that grand feeling of this big city that's been completely overtaken, you know, and people don't feel safe there. Crime is everywhere. They've even, they even run the police station, which stacks up and makes Frankie feel really small. And it's trying to kind of get the audience to feel, wow, this there's a lot of work to do if he really wants to change the city. Um, but obviously there's some lighter parts. We didn't want it to be all just this doom and gloom movie. We wanted it to kind of, this, I wouldn't say the movie's doom and gloom. I'd say it's an upbeat movie that carries you through some dark times. But in the end, it's, you know, it's, um, I, let me let me just cut myself off there and go on another path and say um, another inspiration was the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight trilogy. Um, the atmosphere kind of create those in the movie at parts. Really, just watch a lot of movies to see how kind of how they did things and put it into our movie. Yep, incredible. He did the Dark Knight trilogy, um, Inception. He did some incredible things in there, and I. I think that's kind of what we were going for. I love his directing style. I love the way he does things. Um, so we kind of cinematically tried to make it. We It was an inspiration from him. We look up to him. Most of our filming took place during winter. Okay. And so I'm going to use that as this basis here. Um, a typical day would be I would wake up at 7 o'clock. I'd go to school for from 8 to 2 since I'm a senior. I would go to basketball from three to five, and then we can start filming. And so we'd get everyone at our house around six, 6.30. I'd maybe have, you know, a cookie for supper at that, you know, just to hold me over. And then we'd go out into the freezing cold, um, all the way into downtown Sioux Falls, about five miles away. We'd film for maybe two hours, try to get what we need, um, try to get coordinated what needs to be done, talk to the actors about what they need to do, who they need to be, um, tell everybody what's going down, get them into the, get them involved, go over the script, film it all, and get back home before nine because obviously we had to do the same thing again the next day. And so each day was packed with things other than filming, which made it really tough but we got it done. So those days were fun because we knew that we had all the time that we needed. I'm talking about like a day where we have all the time in the world. So when we know we have a lot of time on our hands, we really, I would draw up storyboards, how I wanted everything to be framed and we'd take our time on each shot and make sure each shot is framed right and framed properly. We'd do takes multiple times. Obviously when we don't have time, it's a, okay, that was good enough, next scene. But when we have time, we say, we tweak the little things, you know? When we're on set, we kind of try to get into the minds of the actors and try to get them to bring out their character more. And uh, and so after we'd set up our equipment, because we'd have, you know, our one or two lights that we have on hand and audio equipment, we'd get that all set up. We'd go through our shots, re reshoots, you know, get everything filmed that we needed until we have it the way we want it, the way we like it, and then, we'd all pile back into the car and drive back home. The very first day was, I felt professional, because you know, we'd never, we've never taken any of our videos this seriously before. And so when you, Cool James Anderson, came in with all the equipment and we started setting up, I felt like I was on a set of a movie and that felt really cool and I was like, oh man. This is what we're gonna be doing for the next couple months. This is gonna be fun. And so we filmed with Dill. I think it was you, Ed, Dill, and myself on the first day of filming. And you know, we just, we got all that. And I think the first day I was kind of starting to take in that this is what we're going to be doing for the next couple months. And this is going to be really, really fun. And so that's, that's what made it really awesome. So the last day on set didn't feel like the last day on set because, um, after that, I still had to go into Sioux Falls. I just went by myself to get some cleanup clips, some B-roll footage for the movie, with little missing pieces here and there. But I could definitely feel like this is coming to a close. And I was feeling relieved because it's like, okay, 
Now we got the tough part done, the filming. Now we just gotta edit this and put it together and perfect it, fine tune it, you know, and put everything. There's still a lot of work to be done after that. So I didn't necessarily feel like it was the last day on set, but I did get a sense of, you know, we don't, we don't need to drive all the way out here anymore. We don't need to try to coordinate all these people. And so it was more of a relieved feeling. The best day on set was the day we did that alley shootout. Um, because we did multiple scenes in that day. We did Under the Bridge with Alex first, and then we all went to downtown Sioux Falls. Or, okay, let me restart. We filmed with Alex first Under the Bridge. Then we all ate Mackenzie River pie which was super good, pepperoni pie. Oh, so good. While we were waiting for the other actors to come in. And then we went and did the alley shootout scene, which I cannot believe we got away with that. You know, middle of downtown Sioux Falls, shooting guns, wearing masks. Don't know how we didn't get caught. Um, but that was super fun. Everybody had a really fun time with that. And then, right after that, we took Noah and went back to the bridge and finished up our fight scene. And we had more people there that day. And so we got input from them on what they thought would be some cool moves and stuff. And it was just, it was such a productive day and I felt good when we got done with that. So that was probably my favorite day on set. We were never comfortable on set. I'd have to, <laughs> I'll put it that way. The worst day of filming was the first day filming in Cyrus's office. Um, we told everybody to meet here at eight o'clock and I'm so proud of them they did. We all met here at eight o'clock, um, but we were tired, you know, and it was the middle of the summer. It was late July and this, this room we're in right now. And this room was hot. It was steaming in here. And so we were all sweating. You know, we all had our winter stuff on because this takes place during winter. Um, and we filmed for almost five or six hours. It was about five or six hours that we were in here. And we ended up, using maybe 20 seconds of what we got out of that day. But obviously that's looking back on it now, but I mean, it was hot, it was sweaty, we were crabby. We had a lot to film in here and we didn't even end up using any of it, 20 seconds worth. Another thing that was bad about that day is that we had eight people packed into this room and this room is not very big. It's, I'd say, 10 by 20 room at max. And when you have eight people, eight big people sweating in a 90 degree room trying to film, it doesn't go very well. I was incredibly thankful for everyone that helped out. Um, there were times when I would call big groups of people together. I'll give the example of the opening party scene. We needed at least 30 people to be there that day. And it was all the way across town and people needed to dress nice. There is no, there was no way in my mind that that scene was going to turn out like I wanted it to. But everybody that said they would be there was there. And they, they came through for me. They came through for the movie and Everybody did their part and everybody was so helpful because when you're running on a zero dollar budget, nobody gets paid and they paid with their time. And so I'm incredibly thankful that everybody helped the way they did because we could not have done it without them. It's awesome. On set, we are very good at bringing out the acting ability in people. Um, I think that everybody played their part to the best of their abilities and that's all you can ask of them. And I thought everybody did an incredible job. I thought everybody played their parts incredibly well, even over the fact that we're just high school students. Incredible. I thought everybody played their part to their best of their abilities and the best they possibly could, which made it awesome, which made their characters come to life. Absolutely not. I think that when you're making a movie, you use what you what you have, especially on a zero dollar budget film. I, I think in no way, when you're trying to tell a story and you're trying to get a story across, it doesn't matter who you use because it's all about the story. 
Um, we play characters that are supposed to be much older than we are. We don't care. We use what we have. And we're the idea is the story. And if you get the idea and the story across, that's all that matters. You know, it's, it's storytelling. It's not being technical. Like, oh, you know, you're 20, but in this movie, you play a 40 year old. You know, it's, we do what we, we use what we can. I mean, we don't have adults on hand that we can hire. We have our friends in high school and that's who we use. We wanted to go bigger. We wanted to take everything from the original Slick Triggers and amplify it and turn it up. And so we did. Downtown Sioux Falls is very cinematic looking and it's, it's only five miles away. And so we really wanted to utilize what we have around us, the areas around us. And so, you know, we just drive through there and scout locations and we found some really cool places, you know. It's, it's hard to film in a town of about 3,000 people. Not that it can't be done, just that for this particular movie, what we wanted to go for was something on a bigger scale. And so we had to use Downtown Sioux Falls for that. I would say so. Um, obviously we did the best we could. We we really tried to get the bigness of, you know, the skyscrapers, the city life. We, we did what we could and I think it captures it. I think, you know, it's as good as we're gonna get. I'll put it that way. With what we have, it's as good as we're going to get. Um, because we didn't... At no point in this movie did we say good enough. You know? We did many reshoots. The scene where Frankie's getting choked out by Earl and, and Tony's talking to him, that very last scene, you know, we filmed that four different days. Everything that you see in the movie is shot on four separate days put together. And so at no point in the movie did we just say that's good enough. And so I would say that we did capture the the atmosphere we were going for. I learned that you can't just film whatever you want, wherever you want, with whatever you want. I didn't learn that till the end of production when we finally did get caught um, by three squad cars pulled up on us when we were filming in an alley. And that was an eye opener because then I looked back on everything that we had done and it was a shock that we didn't get caught before. And so that's kind of where I think, you know, there's no way that we couldn't have made this movie without God because he lined stuff up for this to happen. Then it kind of started clicking in my mind, wow, look at how all this has lined up for us to be able to make this movie. And in the end, it's just incredible that we were able to pull it off without getting caught from the very beginning. Because think about if we had been caught on one of those first days of filming in downtown Sioux Falls. None of the other scenes, we wouldn't have gotten that car chase hanging out the window. We wouldn't have got that alley scene. We might have even done time in jail. Maybe not, but still. I mean, there were some serious penalties, you know? And it's just incredible that we, that, that we were able to do it. And now we know, now we know what is legal and what's not, what you can and can't do in public. Unfortunately, there are restrictions, but we got the movie done. In my younger years, my younger months, a couple months ago, I would have told them, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Get in, get the shots, get out. And in rare cases, that is what you have to do. I mean, it's just the way it is. But now I would say, let people around you know. I would, if you wanna do a shootout, let the people in the area know. Not necessarily that you have to let the police know because the people around you are gonna be the ones that report it. So let the people know, let people know what you're doing. Give them a heads up, maybe place a sign out saying, that's one thing I think we could have done is put a sign out saying filming in progress. Um, and so I would just say take extra precautions, especially because if you try to do something like we did and you do end up getting caught, it's going to put an end to your whole project, potentially. So don't just go. You have to take your precautions. But if you can get in good with the police of your area, that's a plus too. If you let them know what you're going to be doing, it's not that we had to do a senior project and for that senior project, I chose this. It's that I wanted to do this. And so I chose to also make it a senior project because we wanted to do this anyway. We were gonna do this regardless of if I had to do a senior project or not. We've just always wanted to make a movie. And what better senior project to do it than just kind of put it all into one. And so that's, how, that's kind of how that all came to be. My goal going into any shoot was 
I wanted to feel that we captured the idea of the scene. That's it. I didn't care how far away from the script we went. As long as we captured the feeling of what we wanted for that, that was good. Obviously there's some specific lines that we needed to get put in there, but as long as, and that was another good thing. Um, you know, the actors, and especially you, Clems Anderson, incredible at, at kind of letting people know how this is kind of getting in their minds and letting them know how is this supposed to feel. And if, if I felt that there was a good connection there, then I would feel satisfied with the scene. You know, as long as people are trying their very best and doing the best they can to act, it's gonna be awesome. Everybody is capable of an Oscar-worthy performance. Everybody, it doesn't matter. Because acting is reacting, you know? And that's what a great teacher of mine once said, acting is reacting. And so if you can capture the idea and you can connect with the audience, that's all that matters. And that's, that's all we wanted going into each shoot. And as long as we felt like we had captured that, we were satisfied with that. So Cole James Anderson was an incredible help for this film. He was there um, every day of the shoot. Uh, obviously aside from little separate times when I had to go off by myself, but he was there from the very start. Storyboarding, um, ideas, audio, equipment, all of that. Could not have done it without him. Um, he is very knowledgeable. He's more knowledgeable about equipment than I am. He's, he's the precautions guy, you know? He keeps us out of trouble. He was the one telling us to hide our guns and to not wave them around in public. And so, Definitely could not have done the film without him. He is an incredible, incredible as, um, at, at knowing what I wanted to do with each scene. He knew what we were going for. He knew what needed to be done and he did it. Very much get things done and awesome. And we need that. Um, another person I would say, is Joey Schultz. He did animations for the movie. He did the um, the animated credits, the opening title card, gunshots, all that. Movie wouldn't have looked near as good as it did without him. Um, he helped me a lot with things like that. And so, and then aside from that, it's just, it's everyone is just incredible. I we everybody's little parts. I mean. You know, from a day where, hey, we need you to drive. Can you come drive in downtown Sioux Falls? And if they had said no that day, that scene couldn't have been happening, you know? And it's just the, each little person contributed. When, when you don't have many people to work with, each tiny part is huge. Because each tiny thing, you take that out and the whole thing falls apart. And so everybody came together and it was awesome. At no point did I question whether we could do something or not. I never thought anything was impossible when we were filming this. In fact, when I was writing the script, I purposefully made it a step further than what we had ever done before. I pushed the line of things that people said could be done. Um, and so with that mindset, if you don't limit yourself, you can literally just, okay, let me start again. With that mindset of not limiting yourself from the start gives you so much confidence because at times too much confidence, but those are lessons you can learn later. When you don't limit yourself and when you just go for it, look at what we did. We made an entire movie and premiered it in a movie theater. You can't, we made an entire movie and premiered it in a movie theater during basketball, during school, during winter in downtown Sioux Falls. You cannot tell me that you can't do something that you want to do. It's all possible. That was just anticipation. I was a little nervous, but I'll give this example. Um, my basketball coach, Day of the premiere, you know, I'm feeling kind of nervous because 
I, I really wanted to make sure people like this that we've literally put the last year and a half of our lives into. And so I get a call and I pick up the phone and it's my basketball coach and he says, are you nervous? And I said, honestly, yeah, I am. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a bit nervous. He's like, are you nervous for the event or are you nervous because you're not prepared? And I said, I'm nervous for the event. And he said, then you're ready. And that means that we were prepared. We had done everything that we could in that year and a half to get this ready for people. And from that point on, there's nothing else you can do, you know? And so then that kind of eased me. I'm like, okay, we're done with it now. We did what we could and people are gonna take it how they're gonna take it. And so that was kind of, as long as you're prepared, you have nothing to be nervous for, you know? You know you can do it, you know you've done it, so do it. I was very thankful for all the people in my life that were able to come and see what we've made. Um, it was awesome. People, everyone I knew came and supported and, and was there for us on our big premiere night. And that was awesome because being able to see everyone and being able to show them what we've worked on, there was no feeling like that. You know, when we're watching that movie and you know that this was our hard work that we've done and all these people get to see it. That was quite the feeling. I've never felt that before. That was really cool. We wanted to take it again. We wanted to take it a step further from what people thought we could do. Oh, okay. You made a full length movie put it on YouTube. No, we're going to put it in a movie theater. You know, it's always going the next step of what people say is possible. Who would ever think that you could just make a movie and put it in a movie theater? Just do it. And that's what we wanted to do. And we did it. And it was awesome. And so again, it was that mindset of always elevating what you think you can do. Absolutely. Um, and not only about movie making, but about everything that goes into it, you know? Um, my original thoughts when I were going into it was, okay, you know, we're gonna start, we're gonna get better at filming, and by the end of it, I'll learn new filming techniques, you know, I'll work, I'll know how this equipment works, and, and I'll know more about this, but by the end, it became so much more than that. It became so much more than just knowing how to make a movie, but it's about relationships, it's about it's about the people that are in your life. It's about the places. It's about everything, everybody in your life. And and it, it really all, is all about relationships. And that was probably the biggest thing I learned is how, how to manage and handle your relationships with people and how things can strengthen your relationships. Um, disadvantages is that everybody's gonna wanna do it. You know, everybody wants to be a star. Nobody wants to put in the work. And so, and people that do want to put in the work, people will always find an excuse. But then again, everybody wants to do it. So you're going to get so many things out there, so many things to sift through, um, all these different projects that are out there, you know. And that's the disadvantage of it being so accessible is that everybody wants to do it. But then the advantage is, look how many people can see it. I mean, we live in a time like none other where I can make this movie, I can put it on YouTube, and anyone in the world can watch it. That's incredible. And so just the age we live in is great for being able to share things and, and, and get stuff out there. We all know what's right. We all know what we're supposed to do. And the message of the movie is that if you do what you know is right, things are going to go well for you. Even though it may not seem like it, things are going to go well for you. And you don't need to fear other people because as Carl tells Frankie, the only one to fear is God. You don't need to worry about all these other people, but if you do, if you do what you know is right and what God says is right, you're gonna be incredibly successful. And it, like I said, it might not always seem that way, but when it comes to the end, you know, it's that that's it works out for the, those people. The people that do what they know is wrong just because they want to, it doesn't end up well for them in the end. We saw that with Robbie, and that's kind of the analogy for the movie. You notice all the goons are wearing the same mask. They're all conforming, they're all 
hiding behind a mask. They all act the same. They all fall in line with Cyrus, who's leading them down the wrong road. And they all know that. And that's why at the end of the movie, when they don't have the evil leadership anymore, they all turn back because we all know what's right. And if you do what you know is right, things will work out for you. What people tell you is possible is not what's actually possible. You can always take it a step above what they say and what you think is possible. You can always go further. And that is when innovation happens. That is when the next big thing happens, is when people go farther than they're told they can. Um, it, it's true that limits are just an imagination. Limits are a mindset. And if you don't have a limited mindset, then you can do whatever you want.